Well, howdy all. I've uh, been making a bit of progress lately on this Fiat. Um, so first off, I've been getting a few things to get nickeled for the um, for the car. So you can see I've got all the wheel nuts here. So far, I think I've done about, I don't know, 14 or so, I suppose. Let's get them all out of the bag. Got them. Yep. Yes, yeah, so you can see they've all been polished up. Especially, I started off with some, like, we've got a whole collection of them. These, these ones are mostly had it. Like you can see some got big chunks taken out of them like that. You know, a lot of them are just really battered and bruised after the 80 odd years of use. But, um, so the good ones they polished up quite well. So, what I've basically done is I've taken them like that, stuck them on a bolt like this, the same size thread, and then I've used them on the grinding. You can see, this one's got a, a wire buff on it, so you just, you know, turn it around. Buff it all up and then you get your little file on. So I just got a small one like this, it's not very coarse. Get all the scratches and dings out of it. And if they're really bad, I've got a stud just coming out of the drill press like this. And you just screw it onto the bottom of the stud. Use different size, size, um, grits of sandpaper. So I've started with 400, then 600, and then 1000. So that's how I've polished them up. Yeah, and then once you're done, just give another a whirl on the wire buff and that brings them up to really, really nice. So. What have I got? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. I've got 16 done so far. So, that's not bad. Not bad at all. So, also, um, as you can see that a bit more in the rear, so we're taking these panels here, like the, I suppose, called them side walls in your mudguard if you want. Taking them off, you can see them here. Got to get new one. We're going to make up new ones of these. They're all rusted and horrible, but they're good enough for patterns. So, and they just nail on around here. Um, yeah. So that's coming along. We've also we've got all the wheels ready to be painted. So this is one of them. Um, the 19-inch wheels. We've got you know, bogged up with the dents and what we have to. And we've checked them, and they're actually pretty well round, which is a good thing considering their wheels. So you can see all the dents along here. This one was the most dented. And I can probably make a guess that it was the front left hand wheel, you know, the one whenever they pull into the curb, they'd hit the curb with it. So, be it there or sandblast, and they were coated in a primer that can either be done as acrylic or two pack. And we're doing acrylic black, so they're all done, ready to go. The only thing we're waiting on for now is some nice weather, because it's a beautiful day, but it's just windy. Well, that doesn't look windy now, it's been on and off. You can see the trees. Moving. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah. Um, then also with this, we have been mucking around the body. You know, as I said, we've got the tub tub off the body. It'd be so much easier to make a Ute, I tell you. Um, here we found out it basically screws on down here into this here, and then also got a bit of metalwork that came over the front of it. So the bottom bits of wood on that weren't very flat, but we've fixed them up the best we can. Um, as for this, all the woodwork in the seat and everything under there, that has all been done. So that's all finished and the doors are fitting quite nicely, so, you know. This one's the worst because it's got a bit of a gap here, but that just needs to come in like that. I'm not sure how we're going to do that, but we'll fix it somehow. Um, yeah, it's the same for the passenger door. The passenger is actually a lot better. Fits really nicely the whole way around. And yeah, so that's all good. Uh, we've also just set the mud guards on there to see what it what it looks like. Um, yeah, and stuck the headlights on. So when we got it, the headlights weren't actually on it, so we never. Oh, hang on. Just open the doors. Never seen what it looks like with the headlights on it. So there you go. Sort of looks like a car, doesn't it? But yeah, headlights aren't too bad. The rims have got a fair few little dings in them and knocks. Um, so we can, we'll have to do a fair bit of work to get them. All right, then we'll get them nickeled. But um, this is one of the original glasses. You can see it's got Fiat etched into it or sandblast or whatever into the glass. And then on the other side, you can actually see it's hand painted if I can get that good enough. There you go. You'll see all the strokes. So it's just hand painted mist halfway up the lens. You got your parkers down the bottom here. The rims of the parkers are very good, but the glasses are had it again. You know, they've got little stone chips and everything on them. But um, 
yeah, our guards actually fit quite well. We just only got a little bit of work to do in them. This one here is rusted out where it meets the radiator down the bottom. Uh, you know, it's got a little crack there and rusted out where your bolts go to hold your mud, you know, running boards on. You can see this bracket here, that's the original type that they had, but it's been folded out to accommodate the larger wheels that were put on here in the 40s. You can see it's got the, the smaller 16 inch rims, and of course they're wider, and the 19 inch rims would have wouldn't, they were narrower, sorry, so they would have fit in that when it was closed up, they had to open them up to put the bigger wheels on. So one other thing that we've also noticed is this since putting the running boards, or sitting them back on rather, um, is that they slope down here in front of the front passenger door. Um, it's probably not that easy to show on camera, but they do slope down quite a fair bit. And it probably looks worse than what it is because we've got the front wheel on there, which of course always goes flat. It holds air for a couple of hours and it goes down. But the main reason it sits down here is because um, when the car was used, people would have got in from this side because that side's obviously too hard with your handbrake there and your seat, you know, not, not a lot of room, so that's what that's going to be, that's sitting down. So we've got to take that bracket back off and probably bend it up, which of course means it'll be ruining our paint that we did in the bracket, but that's nothing serious. That's easy to fix. So yeah, um, just trying to think what else we've done. I'm also, also going to send in the hubcaps for this to get them re -nickled. Now there's not a lot of work, not a lot that I can really do to these. I mean there was, where was it, a few pits you can see there. That's just in the original, from the original casting, we can't really do much for that. And if you wanted to solder over that, we've since found the solder doesn't stick to, I mean a nickel doesn't stick to solder so that's a bit of a pain. And along with these wheel nuts we've also got to get these split washers done so these are the original ones for the car but I can't find a complete set so I might have to go to Bunnings or a hardware store perhaps and just find some um, split washers the same size and get them nickel. So meanwhile in between all of that I've been mucking around on the gauges and the dash. So this is the original dash from the car you can see it's got all kinds of scratches and marks on it and I've polished it up a fair bit hoping that I'll be able to reuse it but I don't think I will have to get a new one made. Um, but this is a dash cluster for the car. Um, the gauges, the gauge faces are original and so is the glass. I had to get the rims re nickled and of course the fret face re nickled as long as the, as well with the um, your starter button here and your interrupter button which is your stop button. Um, these knobs here operate your lights so you've got one for your headlights and one for your side lights or whichever whichever way they may be. But the only thing is with this, um, the guy that nickled it didn't do a very good job. You can see there it's got a chunk of solder, I mean not solder, I'm talking a chunk of nickel right there and you know, just all also around there, like a shadow effect on the rims for your, for your air. you can see it there. And also up here, that was a little repair that was done in solder. And it didn't cover too well, or didn't cover at all, so it makes me wonder whether it doesn't stick to solder. If it didn't, I wish we knew that before. And then this here is your dash light. Uh, basically what happens, this, this part here, it stays stuck to the dash, and you turn your the actual light itself, you screw it in or out, and that turns it on or off. And the last thing I've got done is the speedo here. Now when we got this, it was in a pretty bad state. The original gauge face of it, if you know these types of gauges, they're, um, I can get, get it out. <laughs> there we go. They are like a brass coated in a etch of some form, I'm not sure. But that was pretty well had it, so I actually just scanned it on the computer and then I redid it uh, using Photoshop. This program that I use is called GIMP. It's a free download, so if you just type in GIMP, that's G-I-M-P. Um, it's a great little program, basically the same as Photoshop. Um, so yeah, that's where he went over it, all of it. And then I just printed it out to the right size I need and the right colour. And basically just stuck it on with normal school glue. <laughs> I used the hole punch to cut it out and then where the holes are for the, um, for the gauges, they're actually beveled, so I just got a pencil or the right diameter or a pen and put it in there and just turned it carefully and that um, made the paper fit perfectly. Then I've also I've remade all the insides of that and I've taken all the part, cleaned it, um, made sure it was all operational and put it back together and greased it as it should have been. And it's actually came up really well and it works too. I've put the um, put the speedo cable on it and it all works properly so so I'm really happy with that. And this glass, the original glass where it broke, but I found this at an antique motor spares and it was a bit large a bit bit larger diamond than what I needed, so I just 
I actually managed to sand it down with sandpaper, so that was really good. Uh, and the last thing, you can see this trigger here, and that's your, that sticks out the front of the dash through that little notch there. And um, that's what you use to press. You press that and the top three digits, that's your trip meter, so that resets it. But the funny thing with this, um, it doesn't actually record the total mileage that the car has done, because you've got your, that's your decimals of a, oh, this is miles, so that's point mile. So you go 1 mile, 10 mile, 100 mile, 1000 mile. So basically, this only go up to 9,999.9 miles, and then it'll reset itself back to zero again. So I'm not sure how much, how far the car's been. Um, when we got this, it was on two, three, no, I'm not talking about. Um, yeah, two, three, six, zero, zero. So that's two thousand three hundred sixty miles. So I'm not sure how many times it's been around. There's no way to tell, no way to count them. Uh, but like I said, if anyone else does have one of these speedos and knows differently, please let me know because it'd be very inter interesting to see how far this car has actually gone. Um, now you can also see, should be part of the aluminium um, base that's folded over there, but it broke off, so I just had to make up something like that to fit, but yeah. That works. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks.